Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the show. And get ready for what's in store, because today we get to investigate an historic town of the Wild West. It's a tiny speck of land called Honeywell. But this town is the center of a ghost story. You see, people who come here say they hear loud bangs, or sometimes howling, or arguing. One man wrote a story about how he was walking down the street at night, and a ghost rose up from the sidewalk and started chasing him. He was so scared he drove for an hour straight home and didn't sleep for three nights. And so we've come here to see for ourselves and try to get to the bottom of the Honeywell Ghost Mystery. And you are welcome to join us. We are delighted to have you along. Let's get started. Honeywell is a small city that sits on the border of Kansas and Oklahoma, an attractive land known as the Cherokee Strip. Due to an 1800s mapping error, the one mile wide, 100 mile long area was claimed by neither state, and thus forth became a temporary no man's land of cowboys, outlaws, and other rough types. In the golden age of the Old West, Honeywell was a shipping point for Texas cattle. In the 1880s, the town had two storefronts, two dance halls, eight saloons, and a fine hotel with a Saturday night ballroom, which was mentioned in the verses of a popular country ballad of the time, with little more than cowhands and railroad workers frequenting the territory, violence became commonplace. There were no lawmen to speak of in the 1880s in or around that area, and typically cattle wrestlers and other criminals were dealt with by the ranchers themselves. This culminated in the Honeywell gunfight of 1884, when cowboys Oscar Halsell and Clem Barfoot entered Hanley's saloon and quickly became drunk, causing problems. Two Kansas lawmen entered the bar also, although they were only passing through. And when they tried to quiet the disturbance, several people quickly drew their pistols and began firing wildly. When the smoke cleared, Clem Barfoot and a deputy sheriff were dead. The other cowboy, Oscar Housel, went on to become a prosperous rancher of the area and an employer of legendary outlaws Bill Doolin and Bitter Creek Newcomb of the Wild Bunch Gang. In the 20th century, Honeywell greatly declined. The last post office closed in 1960, and mostly the only residents left are farmers. But people driving by on the highway say they've seen lights coming down from the sky like spirits on Halloween. The flickering lights land on the spot at the center of town where the once grand Hale Hotel stood until it burned down in the 1900s. According to Wikipedia, when the ashes of the hotel were scooped up, they recovered 70 pounds of melted lead. The metal came from bullets that were lodged in the hotel walls. All right, this is Honeywell. We better check it out. All right. Let me know if you see anything that might be on it. Oh, goodness. Somebody's been doing target practice. Wow. Are those bullet holes on the house there? Yeah, 
Wow. Somebody went trigger happy on this place. We got somebody with a quick trigger around here. And we got a puppy with us today. Yeah, Adventure dog. Adventure dog, okay. he's coming along. No, I don't, and I don't know what it is now, but the only existing photo of Old West Honeywell, taken circa 1880. This building can be seen in the background, and the photo was taken at a hanging. There was no police force here in 1880, it was the town that decided to have a hanging. Wow. They took it upon themselves and just carried it out. And I believe, I could be incorrect, but I believe that this is where the Hale Hotel once stood. It was originally called the Honeywell Hotel, and then the Santa Fe Hotel. And then it became the Hale Hotel. And this is the City Hall building. A little known fact is that the town of Honeywell is one of the first towns in American history to have a female mayor. But she was never on the ballot. She was written in because the town citizens respected her strong moral code. But the men of the town resented her so much that the three city council members would not show up to work. They refused to go in that building as long as she was the mayor. Well, she wrote to the state attorney general. He sent them letters informing them that they would be facing fines and jail time if they remained derelict in their duties. And so all three of the men resigned. Wow. She was under tremendous pressure to quit her job, but she didn't. She continued serving, and the town of Honeywell, which used to be a pretty rough place, turned into a rather nice little town, as you can see. You think it should be a breakfast restaurant? I'm thinking... And this is the remaining industry, the town of Honeywell. Grain elevator. Yes, I will say that's one of the more unusual looking elevators I've seen. It looks like that whole part was like built on way later. Actually, I think you're right. Wow, it's like there's a shed up there. I know. What? It's like they built a shed on top of an old grain silo. Wow. Yeah, one of these could be the hanging tree. Or maybe even this. Wow. Wait a minute, that's not a tree. Oh, windmill. That is an old windmill. This is a very old windmill. It's made of wood. Look how old those boards are. Look at this antique pipe below it. Think how long it must have took for all this. What is this that's growing around it? You know what? It's, it's whatever that tree is, look, it's taking over that building too. Or whatever that vine is. 
You're right, there's some sort of large vine that is taking over the town. Look at the ladder on the other side here. There's an old ladder that goes up to the top. <laughs> I do too. It's in that tree. You can see them. Really? Oh, that tree is loaded with bees. Oh, yeah. Wow. Is that an outhouse? <laughs> it does appear to be an outhouse, yes. Wow, that tree is seriously swarming with the bees. Perhaps the swarm of bees could explain some of the ghostly sounds. It's possible that this hive, this enormous hive of bees that we've discovered could have something to do with the nightly ghost attacks and the ghostly aura that has been described by visitors to the town. It, it does sound, I mean, if I was here at night and I heard that I would be... Yes, at nighttime, this could be mistaken for ghost activity. It's an ambient sound, but it is something that could really disturb you if you were walking through the dark. Wow. Yeah, those are the type of bees that could go crazy at any minute. Yeah. Yes, this building has been here at least 140 years. Yep. Pieces of wood. Well, what we can report so far is bullet holes yes. all over buildings. Yes. Lots of bullet holes. And bees. Bullet holes and bees. And bees. Bullet Bullets and bees. Hey, that'd be a good name for the coffee shop you were thinking about. <gasps> I like that. Because the coffee is the bullets, and then the, the honey buns are the bees. And so as our day comes to a sunset, our mystery comes to a close. Perhaps there are ghosts floating around the town of Honeywell, but we did not see them. We saw the rage of untold bullet holes, heard the hum of swarming bees, and witnessed the reclamation of nature's green vines. It is believable to us that vengeful gunfighters still materialize here in the moonlight hours. But their wrathful firepower has long since diminished in the hot sun, like a fading distant gunshot. Adios, rancheros. Good night.